Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the UKV have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as the next few days still looks very dry and warm similar to the last few days um, as we do end meteorological summer and start September but towards the end of this coming working week to Friday, Saturday and Sunday lower pressure is going to be returning and quite a vigorous low, little cut off low system that is going to develop and it's just going to sit by us for a number of days spiralling in plenty of showers and we'll be able to have a look at the first glimpses of those showers on the UKV uh, at the five day time frame today but yeah a lot of showers especially in the south and the west but not exclusively further northwards and eastwards will see showers at times could also see some warmer air which could even bring in a lot of thunderstorms as well at times so have a look at that in detail we'll then have a look at what the longer term is doing we'll actually have a check or check out the NHC the National Hurricane Centre website today and you may be wondering why would we be having a look at that and it is because the hurricanes and the tropical systems that do develop in the Atlantic can start to impact the UK a week or two downstream from them forming. And the uh, hurricane season is starting to really get going. We don't have any named systems at the moment, but we've got four areas of interest, which is the most we've had all season so far. So it looks highly, highly likely we see some tropical systems develop over the next five days. And in around 10 to 15 days time, those, those could enter the North Atlantic and spice things up for the middle of September. So we'll have a look at that as well, along with the GFS, GM, East and OEF and the ensembles to finish the video. See as, of course, what is the most likely scenario as we head into the middle of meteorological, um, as we head into the start of meteorological autumn and the middle of September. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So if you start on the live radar, you can see it is another reasonably dry, warm and sunny day. There are some showers around, a few across the Midlands into parts of Yorkshire, across the Highlands of Scotland and various other small little shower systems across Scotland and Northern Ireland. But elsewhere, it is pretty dry, some cloud around, but still plenty of sunshine and warm conditions. And that is just going to be the theme over the next couple of days through Tuesday and Wednesday. And most likely for many in the east, at least in the south, Thursday as well. But, as I said, precipitation and thicker cloud and cooler conditions are going to start to be spreading in from the north and the west come Thursday and Friday and widely into next weekend. So please make sure you do cherish the next few days. It does look like for at least a period of time it could be the best weather we do see. So if you do have a look at those temperatures, I'm recording this around just before 3pm, you can see again, those temperatures are really quite warm. Again, those peak temperatures are further westwards because we do have an easterly flow at the moment. So parts of the Republic of Ireland, southern Wales and southwest England are seeing the best temperatures. Further eastwards, still pleasant, high teens, low 20s, but it's those sort of mid-20s, 24, 25 degrees further westwards at those peak conditions. But it's still, as I said, widely high teens, low 20s, so another very pleasant and pretty warm day. It's quite hot across parts of France. There is very hot air just to our south, but we're not going to be tapping into it. Um, it is going to remain to our south before we see those low-pressure systems arrive later this coming week. Now, if you have a look at the UKV and see what it's doing over the next five days in terms of precipitation and temperature, we've had very little precipitation over the last few days, a lot of drier weather, but we will start to see some Quite widespread precipitation pushing in by the end of this working week. And you can see this afternoon, a few showers around, some thicker cloud, but still plenty of sunshine and warm weather. And this UKV run is showing shower activity where we're actually seeing on the live radar. So pretty accurate today. As we head through to Tuesday afternoon, you can see a few showers pushing into the far east, but nothing too much. Still another bright, uh, sunny and dry day. And as we head into Wednesday afternoon again, a few showers around here or there, but generally pretty dry, pretty sunny, a few clouds again, but nothing too much. But all eyes to the north and the west. Through Thursday, still pretty dry, the north and the west though, thicker cloud is pushing in. Still dry though, for the time being, sunny and warm elsewhere. It's by Friday, early hours of Friday, heavier precipitation pushing in for the west, the occluded front associated with that cutoff low that is developing, and by Friday afternoon, Heavy precipitation is pushing into the far west. Again, showery activity 
increases, but nothing too crazy. And as we head through to early hours of Saturday, that weather front sort of strengthens. We're seeing some quite heavy, persistent rain pushing into parts of southwest England, Wales and Scotland. And a lot of heavy, maybe even thundery showers packing in behind for Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, especially across coastal areas. And again, we'll have to keep an eye on this over the next couple of days. It will chop and change because a lot of this is convection based, but it will be pretty unsettled and a lot of precipitation um, is likely, uh, at least a lot of widespread showers is likely through the weekend into the start of the next uh, working week. So yeah, big low pressure system coming. And the reason we've got that is, or the reason for that precipitation is, as you can see, lower pressure pushing through. This system is deepening as well. It's getting lower in pressure. So it's likely to get stronger in terms of the precipitation amount uh, and the uh, and the intensity as well with that and the widespread nature of it. So it is something we do need to keep an eye on. And one other thing is the temperature is going to be changing quite considerably as we head into the weekend. Look at that out in the North Atlantic, just off the coast of Northern Ireland. Zero degrees at 850 HPA, a pretty chilly air mass pushing in. Warm still across the far east of England, 10 degrees at 850 HPA. And that temperature contrast is just powering those showers and could produce some thunderstorms in the east as we could even draw up some even warmer air than that later into the following working week. So yeah, very interesting seeing that today. Now, if you have a look at the max temperatures, again, you can see this afternoon those temperatures rising back into the low 20s for many in around that 21, 22, or even 23, 24, or 25 degrees across the southwest, parts of southern Wales and the Republic of Ireland. Elsewhere, though, high teens, low 20s. As we head through to Tuesday afternoon, again, those temperatures rising until the low 20s, maybe even mid 20s for some, 24, 25 degrees as possible. And that will just continue into Wednesday as well. Temperatures once again, 24, 25, maybe even 26 or 27 as possible. And into Thursday, similar conditions once again, 25, 26 or 27, widely high teens and low 20s elsewhere. As we head through to Friday, you can see those temperatures still pretty warm in the south. But you can see from the north and the west, much cooler, mid to maybe high teens is starting to push in as that cooler, thicker cloud and precipitation pushes in. And you can see for the early hours of Saturday, much cooler across Republic Island and Northern Ireland, mid to high single digits overnight as much, much cooler air pushes in. So yeah, very interesting seeing what's happening towards next weekend. Very much an autumnal shift with the summery weather moving away. We could still hang on to warm temperatures in the far east of England, but it will be coming with a higher risk of showers, cloud amount, and maybe thunderstorms as well as that energy from the warmer air could power the, the convection even more. So definitely do cherish the next three or four days as this looks likely to be perhaps the last proper widespread summary conditions we do see. There are hints of high pressure returning in maybe 10 to 14 days time, but there are no guarantees as we head into September. And before you know it, higher pressure is starting, will start to turn chillier again. Because remember in the winter, higher pressure, which is associated with warm weather in the summer, is normally associated with, with cold weather. We could start to see inversions and things like that coming in the next couple of months. And that is slowly heading our way. So yes, high pressure could return later in September. But will it be this warm, widely low to mid-20s? Much less likely. So do enjoy the weather we do have at the moment. Now, as I said, we'll go have a look at the mid to longer range and we'll start by going over to the NHC, the National Hurricane Center, powered by NOAA um, over in the United States of America. Now, we're looking at the mid-Atlantic here, the UK. It's just the top right of our screen um, off there. Um, and these are all the Atlantic systems or areas of interest, let's just say, just disturbances. And the yellow is showing where we've got less than a 40% chance of a disturbance in the next five days developing into a tropical depression and the red is the 60 percent and any orange would be 40 to 60 percent but at the moment these are the areas that we do have disturbances we got one just uh, off the off the coast um, 
there and off the coast of Mexico there, close to the Gulf of Mexico, low ch chance, 20% there, another near Bermuda out in the middle of the Atlantic, 10% chance really there, another coming, uh, a tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa, maybe a 30% chance in five days, and another system that got an 80% chance, this could be quite a severe system there if this really does get going so we'll have to see what happens um, but the, all these systems start to power up it means the central atlantic with the hurricane season now sort of in the middle of it um, it could really really uh, power up and we could see these systems as i said later in their lifetimes moving towards the north atlantic toward the jet stream and really spinning up our weather and i do think definitely the extended range over the next week or two from the models is going to be very uncertain it's going to be chopping and changing a lot because even if we do look at the gfs in a minute you'll be able to see there are x hurricanes that are trying to push in around that day 10 to day 14 range um and it, they are so difficult to forecast because they haven't even formed yet and when they do form Still, there is a lot of uncertainty um, in the five-day forecast of them, let alone the 10 or to 15-day forecast pushing out into the North Atlantic and how it interacts with the jet stream. So there is going to be a lot of uncertainty. So I did want to point this out, and that's why there's going to be a lot of uh, up and downs within the models over the next sort of week or so. There's going to be a lot of chopping and changing, and this is one of the main reasons why. Not only is are we heading into autumn? Different climate uh, climate drivers are starting to impact our weather, like the uh, polar vortex starting to form, things like that. But we also have hurricanes and tropical systems that could influence us. So did want to point that out, uh, and we may be looking, maybe making dedicated videos to these systems if they do start to really develop into named uh, tropical storms or hurricanes, and if they do start to get that major status. So we'll have to see what happens at the moment. Though they are just disturbances, uh, and the potential is there over the next uh, sort of five days to to a week or so. And we'll just have to keep all the eyes on what happens with this and their track. But if we do go to the GFS and see what the impacts would be for the UK, you can see high pressure over the top of us at the moment. So we've got very warm and dry weather. You can see a bit of an easterly flow, and that's why west is best for the temperatures at the moment. But you can see that low pressure system dropping out of Greenland and Iceland towards the end of this week and just sitting over the top of us and just to our west over the next week or so, all the way to next week, still there and eventually moving more on shore but sort of petering out as it does so just would be generally a few showers and not quite as vigorous but it is still very unsettled for a solid week there now we are starting to get to the extended time frame beyond day 10 and look what we have out here two hour west out in the north uh, just coming off the northeast of america a very low uh, pressure system there uh, and that is an extra tropical system or a, or a hurricane and that does push into the atlantic we see higher pressure tries to build in this would bring us dry warm weather for the middle of september but as i said these hurricanes can really power up the jet stream and what does this do it doesn't impact us directly but it powers the jet stream and that high pressure system gets pushed away and we go into a westerly unsettled phase so this is an example of where the hurricane or extropical system doesn't directly impact us but powers up the north atlantic in general and means that our weather patterns change instead of high pressure building in giving us dry settled or and, and warm mid-september weather it would give us unsettled lower pressure systems moving in a general westerly flow pushing that high pressure off towards eastern europe so as i said hurricanes and these extropical systems don't have to directly hit us to bring us quite big impacts this is transferring us from warm dry weather to cooler unsettled northwesterly or potentially even stormy sort of weather um, even though the uh, actual tropical system does, doesn't directly hit us so we do need to keep an eye on this as i said um, but for the time being it is dry the next few days turning much more unsettled all the way probably to day 10 it's beyond that where the uncertainty is this run tries to build higher pressure in before getting knocked away by the energy from that tropical system but other runs, as we'll see over the next couple of days, probably don't even develop that tropical system at all. And that's why I said there's going to be a lot of chopping and changing. Now, if we go over to the GM, see what that does over the next 10 days. Again, high pressure building in, low pressure dropping out into the uh, Atlantic, just over the coast, uh, over, off the coast of Ireland. And it just sits there, spinning in, uh, a lot of showers. And yes, we could see some warmer air just to its eastern flank there, potentially powering it a little bit uh, and giving some warm, humid air to that. Maybe some heavy showers and storms developing with that. But... 
I do think this positioning is more favouring just for a generally cooler sort of feel. Look at the temperature deviation. It's not massively cold. It's around or slightly below average at times. Maybe slightly above average in the Far East. As we'll see with the ensembles at the end of the video, quite a few are going above average for London. So the eastern side of the country does look likely to be above average. The west probably below average with a lot of showers around. So yeah, a bit of uncertainty exactly positioning of the low. But both the GFS and GM have that low pressure system. Sticking around all the way to day 10, so a solid sort of seven or six or seven days there of this low pressure being in and around the UK. And yes, it's not going to be torrential rain all the time, it's not going to be absolute washout all the time, but seven days of pretty persistent showers spiralling in is going to be pretty miserable for those who do get it relentlessly, especially if you are in the south and the west. So if we go over to the ECMWF, see how that does compare over the next 10 days. Again, high pressure in control at the moment. The low pressure drops in and just sits to our south and west, spiraling in a lot of showers and thundery weather. If we look at the upper air temperatures. You can see warm air does move into the east. So we could still see mid-20s there. But with the low pressure associated with it, it could be showery and thundery. With that, and right towards day 10, the low pressure just still is over the top of us. You can see maybe the hints of a tropical system exiting northeast America there, just on the far left of the screen. But generally, we are still under lower pressure for the UK. High pressure trying to build in, but still a trough of low pressure there. So still a showery, unsettled feel. So yeah, all three main operational runs today are going for very unsettled weather, all the way from sort of day four to all the way to day 10 on their runs today. So a solid five or six days of very unsettled, showery, cooler in the west, maybe warmer in the east sort of weather. Again, thunderstorms with that and maybe windier weather as well. So to see how it does play out, uh, but at this stage, just a continuation of this unsettled feel that we have been seeing in the model output over the last few days, just continuing, no real wobbles on it at all, perhaps even lasting longer than we initially anticipated. Now if we do finish the video, but have a look at the ensembles, again, you can see for London, above average temperatures through the first week of September, but a lot more precipitation there. Again, the west is going to be higher in terms of those precipitation, but still a lot of convection in the east, maybe thunderstorms as well, starting up around the 2nd, 3rd of September, lasting all the way to around the 8th, 9th and 10th. Beyond that, it does die down a little bit in terms of precipitation and temperatures will turn more towards average, but I think there's just uncertainty there with what's happening with, of course, the jet stream and the tropical systems, because some are obviously trying to build in higher pressure, just like the GFS operational run did, trying to turn it drier and warmer, Others probably have more Atlantic influence. So uncertainty beyond day 10. But of course, there never really is too much certainty at that time frame. Uh, but with the hurricane forecast um, and the general uh, Atlantic powering up, well, I do think that there is going to be a lot of chopping and changing, as I said. But a pretty consistent thing over the next 10 days. Warm over the next three days. Staying warm in terms of our temperatures, but an increased amount of precipitation as we head into the first week of September in the east. And if we do compare it to the ECU, WF, see what those temperatures are showing. Again, around average over the next three or four days, turning above average generally as we head through into the first week of September and a lot of precipitation as well. Some of members are below average. There are on top members that have that low pressure more over the top of us with cooler conditions, but the majority are around or above average, maybe 10 to 12 degrees. Andrew of THBA temperatures could be in the mid 20s, so we see dry weather, but also, as I said, a lot of showers and that warm weather could power some thunderstorms as well. So, yeah, doesn't look too great over the next 10 days, so do cherish the next sort of three or four where we do still have warmer, drier weather because. From the outlook of this, it could be real uh, unsettled start to the autumn. We will see dry weather inevitably over the next few weeks, the next few months. But for the time being, we're not seeing anything really in the mid to longer range uh, for any dry or warm weather. So as I said, do cherish the next few days as you never really quite know when we do see that last sort of warmth of summer. And this could be it. Uh, of course, no real sign of anything warm and dry as we head into the first half of September at this stage. Uh, but it could it could happen. But uh, we're not seeing any major signs of it. Uh, and by the time we get to the second half of September and start of October, the potential for anything widely warm and dry without any exceptional air masses does start to become much, much more difficult. So I said, do cherish the next few days. Hope everyone is enjoying the bank holiday. And of course, this warm and dry weather off the bank holiday and enjoys the rest of your week as we do come to the end of meteorological summer. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, and I'll see you again for another video soon.